Hey guys, Joe here with another couch review and as you can see we have a Ruger today. Before we dive into that, thank you so much for the new subscribers. Well over 50k as of the time of filming this video. I really appreciate that. You guys blasted my expectations out of the water. I wanted to hit 50k by the end of the year. You guys uh, made it happen before October was out. So we have a full 60 days left in the year. Maybe we can get to 100k before the end of the year. Maybe we'll do some kind of giveaway if we do. You'll have to subscribe to find out. Let's dive into this video, though. I borrowed a gun from Liberty Arms, Harrisonburg, Virginia, where I work. Uh, and the reason I did it is because it's on consignment, and it's one I've personally never actually held, even though it's been around since before our store was. It's an underrated pistol, in my opinion, and it's one that I thought we should give some love to today. And that is the Ruger American line. Chambered in 45 ACP. As you can see, this one is empty, so I can go ahead and drop the slide back down on it. And it's one of those pistols you don't think about until you put it in your hands. And once you put it in your hands, you start to notice some cool stuff about it. And that's what we're going to look through today. But let's start by looking in the box. This one, again, it is used, but this one is on consignment. As of the time of this filming, it was still available. It comes with three mags and one of the three back straps in the box, one of them on the gun. So it's missing the super flat one. I believe you can buy these off of eBay or even from Ruger themselves, but this one only has two of the back straps inside of it. Gun lock, everything in there. Nice hard case. Should protect it in most uh, instances. I didn't want to say should protect it in most cases because it's in this case, not that case, or those cases which aren't the case that we're talking about today. So... Yeah. Also, I'm still getting over COVID, so if my breathing's a little interrupted, you'll know why. But let's go ahead and close that back up. Click or close, because you didn't come here to look at that. You came here to look at the couch. Oh, yeah, and a gun. This is a 45 ACP chambered Ruger American. However, it is available in 9mm as well. You can see they use the same size, same size slide so that the barrel is a little bit thinner. And we'll be taking a look at a couple of other barrels that I have here to show uh, the difference in the thickness. However, this gun was originally conceived to compete for U.S. military trials. Naming it the American, maybe they did that on purpose to try to get it a little bit more oomph. Whatever the case may be, it was submitted. However, as we all know, the SIG 320 this one happens to be the civilian version, uh, but the SIG 320 wound up becoming the M17, which became the sidearm of choice for the U.S. military. The M18 is a variant, I believe, that's used by the Navy. And I also believe, correct me if I'm wrong, you veterans out there, that if you are of smaller stature, you could request an M18, which is the compact version of the 320 but we're going to be using this gun to compare a few features to that gun because obviously they were in the same trial uh, taking a walk around the outside it's pretty nice looking gun the back strap is nice it does affect the length of pull which is something that's hard to do on polymer frame guns uh, we're going to be also using my springfield emissary as a bit of a comparison gun as well uh, as you can see it's empty but Without having fully changeable grips and back straps and etc., it's harder to get a change of length of pull. But these guys come all the way back up here so that it actually pushes your palm back. And a few millimeters here can translate up here. It makes it a little bit more comfortable for somebody with bigger hands to make it so that just the pad rests there. So there are some guns that when I shoot them, my finger has to go all the way in and I use the crook on my finger. It's not a big deal. You can be effective both ways, but I tend to prefer to put my pad on there because, you know, I'd rather have a straight finger pulling straight back versus one that's all the way inside of it because, well, I have nerve damage. So it's just easier for me if I have as much control as possible. Has some checkering on the front strap. It's very smooth, but at least it has something. But I would put some talon grips or some grip tape on this gun, uh, especially once you choose the back strap that works for you. Decent undercut here on the trigger guard. Hand definitely gets up on there really easily. Uh, flat front to the trigger guard, but it curves down underneath here. Um, I think I would have preferred it if it was completely flat because it butts up with lights and lasers a little bit better such as like the SIG 320, you can see it's completely flat versus rounded on the bottom. Also, this gives allows you to two-hand 
grip the front of the trigger guard here. As you can see, sometimes when I'm going fast, I want to run my finger up here for more control, and you can't do that here. Um, it is an ambidextrous gun. One thing I'm learning is whoever owned this must have been a right-handed shooter because it's very easy to drop the mags on the right side, left side, not so much. And that could just be me. I have very bad nerve damage in my arms and my, my entire body, actually. So it's harder for me to hit that, but it is ambidextrous right out of the box, just like FNs tend to be. Ambidextrous slide lock slide release. So, and it does work. And then your safety is ambidextrous as well. So that's nice to see. And it is 1911 style, so it's very clicky. And it does work, and it defeats the trigger when it's up. And it locks the slide when it's up. Some guns, it doesn't do any of that. Some guns, you can actually load the gun while it's on safe with the safety up. But this one defeats it. Very nice. 1913 style pick rail. And it's a de decent size and length, so you can put some lights, lasers, bazookas on it. And it does have Novax sights right out of the box. And these are true Novax because they're stamped Novax right in there. <coughs> Pardon me. Three dot sight picture. It's not night sights or anything, but I know you can change those out if you really want to. It has a cutout there so you can see if there's a round in there without having to have a loaded chamber indicator. And just a standard striker plate there because it is a striker fired gun. I do like that they have the magazine cut like that so that you can have the grip angles, excuse me, the grip right there. So if you do have to strip out the mag, you just grab the bottom of the mag. You don't have like super deep cuts on the side of the magwell itself. I do like this too. It's very wide open on the bottom. So putting the new mag in there, super easy because you have a big shelf back here that allows you to get it in there. Let's compare it size wise to the 320. It's pretty much the exact same size, same barrel length from the chambers forward, obviously, and the overall size of the pistol. Is about the same. This one's chambered in 45 ACP, so this one only holds 10 rounds, but the 9mm does hold 17. So it holds the same capacity as the 9mm SIG. Um, here's one for you. Let's go for a size comparison of a 1911, because this is my preferred full-size gun. As you can see, they're about the same size. So yes, this is definitely a full-size handgun. 1911 is much thinner, but that's very common. An all-metal gun tends to be a little bit thinner. It's really weird. Uh, also, this one is single stack versus this one, which is a staggered to double stack, depending on which chambering you have. Yeah. By the way, this is for sale at the store, too. I bought it. wound up not liking it. What can you do? But some of the party tricks that the SIG... <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry about that, guys. Um, again, still getting over COVID. Maybe I'll revisit this gun in like six months to a year, and we'll do a better video. But for now, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the similarities it has to the SIG. Takedown is very similar to the SIG Sauer. Uh, the fact that this is a chassis system is very similar to the SIG Sauer. So obviously, they were keeping an eye on each other to see what they were doing so that they could try to submit guns to the military trial. I like the rear cut here. I think it's very easy to grab. Does the job well up here. You just have their name laser etched into the front here. I would have rather have seen them put some kind of uh, cuts to match the rears up here so that you can do some front. I mean, if you get a good grip on it, you can, but if the gun was slick, it's probably a little bit more difficult to do. My 320 has had a lot of rounds put through it, but it does have front slide serrations. And as you can see, this one, I can actually manipulate it very easily from the front. Let's go ahead and take her down to do that, obviously. Make sure she's empty first. And then next thing you want to do is bring it all the way back and lock it down. By the way, really quick, I've been seeing a lot of comments on there. When you see me grab the top of my gun like that, my hand is not in front of the barrel. Okay? So when you see me manipulate the front of a gun know that my hand is not in front of the barrel. It's just I like to grab in front of the chamber when I'm at home with a cleared firearm because when I bring it to lock it back, it's a lot easier to just do that and do that. So I'll probably make a short showing that anyways. Anywho, 
once you've got it locked back, go ahead and move your takedown lever down 90 degrees. Again, very much like SIG. And you can go ahead and take it apart without pulling the trigger, which is always a nice thing on a striker fired. Not saying that everybody's going to shoot themselves in the junk when they have a Glock, for example, that requires a trigger pull. But it's nice to have a gun that takes down without the need for a trigger pull. Again, SIG the exact same way. They actually look very similar when they're taken apart. But let's get back to the Ruger inside here. Big old guide rod and spring, and it is captive, which is good. And then you can go ahead and remove the barrel. Comes out of the bottom here. And as you can see, your slide is just your standard style. I will say this is a different cut that you don't see on every gun. Everybody does their striker tube slightly different. Uh, it's interesting to see how big that is. But it does the job and it works, so that's good. It actually looks like the sear sits inside of that groove, which is different because most of, most guns are completely smooth on that groove, so the sear just rides on it. Taking a look inside, again, if you were to just take this all the way out, then you could pop out the whole chassis group and change the frame if the frame got damaged. Or if you were to have a different size frame, shorter grip frame, etc., longer dust cover, no dust cover, higher beaver tail, whatever you were going for, then you could just swap the fire control group into it. That's why you will see here that the Shiriolized pot is back here which is not on the frame, it's on the fire control group itself. Big ambidextrous lever for the slide lock slide release, which I prefer. Uh, sometimes you see one that's nice on this side and is super thin on that side. Safety's back here, fully functional. It is more complicated back here than it is on the SIG, but not terribly so. This looks a little bit cheaper, because of the 1913 rails, the way they molded that makes the plastic look a little bit cheaper, but it does not flex at all. So it's super stiff, which is what you want. As you can see, this thing has a pretty thin barrel wall because, again, they're trying to put a 45 barrel into a slide that should only hold a 9 millimeter barrel. For example, this is the 45 barrel on my Springfield Emissary versus the 45 barrel of the Ruger American. Now this is a bull barrel, so this gets a little bit of a forgiveness for how thick it looks, but still. Question is, how does it handle rifling then? Rifling looks pretty good inside, but over time does this... Equal a weaker barrel, not 100% sure. If anybody's put thousands of rounds through one, maybe leave it in the comments and let me know how it's held up for you. Let's go ahead and put it back together. Take your slide, take your barrel, put it in there. Just like pretty much every standard uh, single action striker fired handgun out there. Uh, I don't believe we talked about the trigger pull yet, so we'll do that in a second. But go ahead and put your spring in and compress it a little bit. So you can... Yeah. It's one thing I don't like about some of them. There you go. Is this dust cover because of the way it's designed? Is uh, it's not deep enough to allow the spring to seat farther down and then pop in. I know it's a little bit of a gripe, but it is a gripe nonetheless because, well, I have nerve damage, and I'm looking at this as if I was buying it. Reassembly's that simple, that easy, and then you can just make sure she works. Trigger safety, just like a Glock, although it feels less spongy than a Glock, does have the take up that all these striker fire guns do, because when you rack it, it half cocks the striker. That does not make it a double action pistol. This is what makes the action of the pistol not this shite up here okay when you pull the trigger and it does this and you release the trigger and it doesn't do it again that makes your gun single action sonny if you can't decock it there's no way to get the round decocked or the gun decocked as soon as you load the bullet in there this trigger is live unless you empty the gun that's single action stop fighting me about that 
just the way it is. It's the way it is. But the overall trigger feel is nice. The reset is decent. They added a little piece of plastic down there to stop the trigger from coming all the way back, which is fine. And it feels decent. So, yeah. What do I think about it? I was considering buying it for a minute, but uh, I'm going to pass on this one. I think I'm going to leave that in the case there for somebody else who might be interested in picking up a, uh, well, quite frankly, a big caliber semi-automatic striker-fired handgun. Because most of the ones that are out there, you have the M&P, actually, I don't think the M&P, you have the XDs and the Glocks if you want a polymer striker fire gun. So let me know if you own one of these, how well they shoot, if you would take that over that, or, you know, just your comments, suggestions, questions, all that good stuff. Uh, dealing with COVID has made me a little bit adulpated in the brain. I do apologize if these are a little bit uh, all over the place, but we will be tightening down the reins here in the upcoming weeks. I'm going to be working out of my office more, so I will be editing these videos as well. So... Look forward to that, shall you? Use my affiliate links. Come back for another video. Let me know what you guys would do different. And, as always, I'll talk to you later.